Hi, my name is Sansara Taylor, and I want to respond to the video, I love Jesus, but I hate religion. The truth is, Jesus is a figure that no one should want to follow. And what I want to do in this video is examine the actual content of Jesus' teachings, and I'm going to quote and cite from the Bible. So, if you are a follower of Jesus, I want you to take down the scriptures, I want you to look them up, and I want you to ask yourself if you can defend the passages that are attributed to Jesus. Now, in this video, I'm going to draw heavily from Bob Avakian's book, Away With All Gods, Unchaining the Mind and Radically Changing the World. In particular, he has a section called Seeing Jesus in a True Light. And it's not just that Paul, in his letters, and again, this is in the New Testament, upholds slavery, but Jesus himself, in his parables, accepts slavery as a given. There is the parable of the weeds among the wheat, the parables of the unforgiving servant, the parable of the wicked tenants, the parable of the wedding banquet, the parable of the talents. All these parables accept the idea that slavery and oppression will exist in this world and use these as a way of drawing lessons for life. Look at Matthew 10, 24 through 25. There Jesus says, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. So in this book, Avakian goes through all of the horrific traditions towards women, the stoning of women who are not virgins when they get married. He talks about the emphasis placed on the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin birth. And he roots this cult of virginity in property relations and patriarchal relations, which Jesus was rooted in. So I'm reading again. This is the tradition in which Jesus was deeply steeped, a tradition which he never ruptured with, but in fact propagated and fostered. As another illustration of this, consider what Jesus says about divorce. According to Jesus, for example in Luke 16, 18, and Matthew chapter 5, 31, 32, getting a divorce and remarrying is committing adultery. It is a sin. Imagine, and unfortunately we do not have to imagine, what the effect has been of this teaching down through the ages, through thousands of years of male supremacist social relations. Think of the effect of this, especially on women who are trapped in marriages that are oppressive and abusive. The idea that if they leave an oppressive and abusive husband, that is a sin, a sin equal to adultery. Think of all the truly horrific suffering this has caused and reinforced down through the centuries and centuries and centuries. People, and women in particular, having this preached at them by religious authorities, citing the Bible and the words of Jesus himself. And today in the 21st century in America, we find Christian fascists inspired by and wielding these teachings, working to make it more difficult to get a divorce with the ultimate aim of outlawing and criminalizing divorce altogether. Witness key steps in that direction with the covenant marriage provisions that have been adopted in more than one state in the U.S. Still, some people say, yes, but there's just something about Jesus. They insist, despite all those things in the Bible, and all right, they're in the New Testament and not just the Old Testament, there is something about Jesus, his message of love, and the essential mission of Jesus that we still have to hold on to. Well, once again, Let's look at what Jesus does and says in its actual content and its actual implications and effect. Let's go back to what Jesus does in the so-called miracles of the healing in the Bible, to the ways in which Jesus attributes people's suffering to the possession by the devil or, or to the sin of those who are afflicted and sick. For example, in Matthew 17, 14 through 20, as I referred to earlier, there is the story of Jesus supposedly curing an epileptic boy by casting out a demon. Here is a question that has to be asked. If Jesus went around supposedly curing people in this way, why did Jesus not know better? If this is supposed to be the Son of God, a part of the same essence of God, according to the dominant Christian doctrine of the Trinity, how come Jesus didn't know that epilepsy is caused by real material things? problems with electrical and chemical processes in the brain. How come he thought it was a demon or the devil? Or, if someone wants to make the argument that Jesus did know better, but he chose to speak to people in the terms of those times, then I have another question. Why not tell people the truth 
and help them understand reality as it actually is, including the real causes of sickness and affliction. Why did Jesus, who supposedly loves humanity, instead of telling people the truth, reinforce ignorance and superstition, and along with that, guilt and fear? Or let's talk more generally about what was really Jesus' vision and program for humanity. Jesus himself said that you could boil the commandments of the Old Testament down to two main commandments. See Matthew 22, 34-40. The first of those commandments, he said, is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And the second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, it could be said that this second commandment represents something better than telling people they should have hatred for and should slaughter and plunder their neighbors. But the fact is, these commandments cannot be, and more than that, they should not be, applied in human society. Why not? Well, let's take the first so of these love commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. Right away, there's a problem here. The problem is that God does not exist. And for this fundamental reason, it is impossible to carry out that commandment. But for the sake of argument, for the sake of pursuing this a little further, let us for a moment set aside the fact that there is no God. If there were a God, the only God that Jesus could be talking about is the God of the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures. That is the God, and the only God, Jesus was familiar with. And those are the scriptures he makes reference to repeatedly. Well... A person who is seeking to do good in the world could not and should not love a God like that. And let me note, this was a God that commanded genocide, that sent down plagues, that killed people for worshiping the wrong God or worshiping the right God in the wrong way, that commanded the stoning of women who are not virgins. This is not a God people should bow down to. As for the second commandment, it is not really possible to love all your neighbors after all. In a world marked by profound divisions of class, and great social inequalities. In reality, it is not possible to love and to act out of love for everyone, regardless of the class position they occupy and the role they play in society and in relation to other classes and groups of human beings. If you love the slave master, you cannot really love the slave. If you love the exploiters and oppressors, you cannot really love those they exploit and oppress. If you act out of love for the one, you cannot really objectively act out of love for the other because their needs and interests are fundamentally and antagonistically opposed to the other. The slaves want to be free of slavery and the slave master wants to keep them chained. How can you love them both? There can be no reconciliation between them on the basis of love or any other basis because in the real world they will be compelled to act in ways that are opposed to and in a defin definite sense harmful to the needs and interests of the other. As I referred to earlier, with all the talk of love and peace that is attributed to Jesus, after all, he says in the end, if you don't believe in me, you are going to be condemned to the torments of hell forever. This shows once again is that Jesus was not a supernatural being, part of the same substance of God the Father and at the same time the Son of God. Jesus' ideas and visions, and what they will lead to, need to be evaluated just like those of any other human being, which is what Jesus was and all that he was. And I have already spoken at some length to why those ideas and that vision cannot and will not lead to another world, a radically new world, a better world, a world without oppression and exploitation right here on earth in this material reality, which is the only reality there is. So my name is Sansara Taylor. I've been reading from Bob Avakian's book, Away With All Gods, Unchaining the Mind and Radically Changing the World.